I found that I really liked a lot of Chinese films that I was seeing, so I wanted to bring them to North America. This is in the early 80s, and very few people were thinking about Chinese films at the time. In the summer of 1984, I moved to San Francisco, and I was running this company called World Entertainment, and we had a brand new theater, and we started showing mainland Chinese films at this theater. Um, I started going back and forth to China and looking at all the new films that were coming up, and, and um, the film that really shook me to my core was the film Huang Tudi by Chen Kanke. And um, that was one of the first films we showed commercially in our new theater. And it actually did very, very well. It had gotten great reviews and was playing at a lot of film festivals. And, and so my first job was really to let people know that uh, there was such a thing as Chinese cinema. I think most people didn't even know at the time that there were films being made in China. I felt like I had a life in Hollywood which had nothing to do with my life in China. But the other thing is I had a life in the Asian American community which had very little to do with China as well. China for a long time was not interested in Asia, the Asian American community and the Asian American community was not only not interested in China, they felt a little bit threatened by it. Most Chinese Americans don't speak Chinese or they don't speak fluently. They might have heard it around, you know. They felt a little bit threatened by the rise of the Chinese film market. I said, no, this is a good thing for you. And I think people now are experiencing that because, because of China's large market, all the studios and production companies, they have to think about China. They may not actually, you know, cater exactly to China's market, but it's a, it's a market. It's a very significant market. I think the Chinese filmmakers are also looking to do things that are more global, and the actors are a good way to, to help bridge that gap. 